actually read that and God is saying, listen, I want you to understand that I was there when you got married. I was there when you made a covenant. Not only that, but I want a godly seed. I want a godly family. I want the whole world to look at your family and know there's a God in heaven. There's a God in Madeira. There. There's a God in your home. God is saying something amazing in their lives. And the whole reason for this, God is saying, listen, I want your children to know God. I want them to know mom and dad don't go crazy off each other. Yes, they argue or they fight. It's a good fight. They're not yelling. They accomplish the will of God in their lives. He said, I want a godly seed. I want a godly family. Think about how much we can stop God in our marriage. In 1 Peter 3, 7, look what it says. Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. It says, dwell with your wives according to knowledge. According to the word of God. Not according to your knowledge, but according to the word of God knowledge. According to what God says. That means that you're to govern your marriage through the word of God. You're to govern your marriage through the word of God. It says, likewise, you have to dwell with them according to knowledge. It says, giving, uh, it says, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel. It doesn't mean that she's weak and she's frail, but she's a flower. She's a butterfly. You don't just rip a flower off. She's made different than you. We know that. She has needs and she needs to be spoken to. You've got to be gentle. You've got to understand and treat them like they are the daughter of God. But it says the weaker vessel is not trying to give you a picture of some poor girl that she's supposed to be submissive all the time. And it's yes, sir. Yes, sir. But she's a weaker vessel. Treat her like a queen. Being hires or heirs together, the Bible says. You're heirs together. You know what that means? It's a blessing goes with both of you doing the will of God. The blessings for both of you. I was telling a couple a while back, imagine yourself on a boat and you're in the middle of the ocean. You take off, you take off the, the board, you're mad. Both of you are going to sink. Both of you. They're going to be like, well, forget you. I'm taking the board off too. You both are going to sink. That's how it is in marriage. Whatever you do to your wife, you do to your husband, it's mean, it's crazy, it's off the wall. You're hurting yourself. Uh, I even give another picture to a guy. It's like you stabbing yourself. Oh, be quiet. And you stab yourself in the stomach. doesn't make no sense. Because you're one. You're one, in, you're one in one flesh. That's what you're supposed to be. But it's a problem. When you read here, it goes on. It says, being heirs together of the grace of life. And heir is, a, is something that you have an inheritance together. Not just by yourself, but everything is together. That your prayers be not hindered. And God is saying, it's not just prayer, but your prayers can be hindered by the way you treat your wife or the way you treat your husband. And again, it's not just talking about men, but it's talking about wives as well. And wives, I want you to realize, I know you say, man, God bless my children. I want an obedient household. I want our family to be blessed. I want my husband to be happy. All these things you have. But you'd be the biggest hindrance to your marriage. Bigger hindrance to your family. And you're like praying and you're getting all upset at God. Like, how can you not do that? And God is like, you can't even love your husband right. Or you can't even love your wife right. How do you spend it? I'm not going to listen to what you're saying at all. And I don't want to be like that at all. Then when it talks to men, it's all talking to women. But listen to me, if you're praying and your prayers are hindered, so that word, the word hindered, is a crazy word. It means to be stopped. It means it ain't going on. And as you pray, it just hits the wall and comes right back down. Look what it says here when you read in the Message Bible. It says this concerning wives. The same goes for you wives. Hmm. Be good wives to your husbands. Husbands like, yeah, be good. Be good to me. Be good to your, your husbands, responsive to their needs. Their husbands who, indifferent as they are, I like that. Indifferent as they are. How many of our husbands are indifferent? We're different people. We're complex. Huh? There's any words about God will be captivated by your life of holy beauty. What matters is not your outer appearance, the sign of your hair, the jewel you wear, the, the cut of your clothes, but your inner disposition. Cultivate inner beauty, the gentle, gracious kind that God delights in. The holy women of old were beautiful before God that way and were good, loyal wives to their husbands. Sarah, for instance, taking care of Abraham, would address him as my dear husband or as we know, king. Goes on to say here, you'll be true daughters of Sarah if you're the same, unanxious, and unintimidated. Man, that is powerful. God is saying, I don't want you wives to be intimidated. Some wives can be scary, huh? Get out! I ain't getting out. I don't get down like that. I'm not leaving. At all. My wife's never told me that. Because she doesn't want to work out. Huh? Good luck. It's not going to happen. But the Bible says to respect your husband. The Bible tells us in that, that you're not supposed to be anxious towards you. You're not supposed to be intimidating him at all. And dealing with some issues, I think I have two that God really laid in my heart. I'm going to bring this to a close. I have two things, and I hope that we understand that you guys, first of all, that, 
and God looks at our marriages. And I'm saying today, really in all reality, is you got to look at your marriage and say, man, you know what? I want to take care of my wife. I want to take care of my husband. If I've been acting crazy, I'm going to stop doing that because I see the gods in my marriage. If you go home for now and says, man, just imagine you got to sit right there, right on the couch as you're watching TV. It will change your life. Imagine you got in the room, you're in the room, and God's in here. Nothing wrong with saying, man, God, bless our room, bless our house, bless our marriage, bless our love. I want you in the center of everything, God. Now, what I want to do is deal with two things that have really been on my heart, and I dealt with a lot of men and dealt with different people. I was even up in the mountains, and I got to deal with a lot of men. And, and, and just to let you know, a lot of men, like over 50, 60, 70 years old, and they had just issues. And I was like, man, my gosh, what's going on in this generation that we're living in today? But what I want you to understand is that appearance doesn't matter, you guys. It, it matters. And, and, and what I want you to understand, in dealing with some issues, there's just two that got laid on my heart today, and it's very important. It's hardly addressed. And that you never want to come to a point, husbands, that you stop fixing yourselves up, brothers, or even you sisters. You don't want to ever come to a point. Appearance in your marriage matters. Appearance matters in married men. How many, how many men matters? It does matter. For a man, let me tell you something, you should be, man, you know, I, I care about my wife. I care about how I look you like. I, I know I was trying to look for sloppy men. It was hard to find sloppy just for men. And we know some men can just be sloppy. And what I mean by sloppy, like brush your teeth, you older man, take care of yourself, understand your wife wants you to look nice, wants you to look good. You should look attractive for your wife all the time. It should be that. You should be taking care of yourself. I'm not talking about different weights and all this other kind of stuff. But I'm talking about the shit you should care about you, how, how your wife looks at you. But men, understand your wife's want to walk with a man that cares about himself. And my wife does that. I goes, I don't like you wearing jerseys. I go, what's wrong well, with jerseys? <laughs> So, I mean, if I had a way, I'd be wearing some little black shoes, little polo, little pants, man, I'd be like, walking around. But, and I'm not saying you gotta do all that, okay? But I'm saying, my wife would have me like, man, just dress crazy, okay? But what I think is kind of like, man, I'm, I'm not like, to me, I go, I don't want to dress like, a, I don't know, the best I can say is like, like a, like a little fairy. I don't want to dress like a little fairy, okay? And that's the best way I can describe it, okay? But I don't mean fairy and, and, and any prejudice. I'm talking like, this wife's like a little fairy, just like, hi. I, I, I'm not saying, okay? She has, and that's good, but she does get me clothes, okay? I just women on certain things. Like, man, I'm not used to that stuff. I'm sort of getting into this stuff somehow, some way. Give me some time. But if she had her way, and how many know, sisters, wouldn't you want to change your husband's wardrobe? Yeah. Then we just see some hands. <laughs> right, so that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You know, but you got to give him some time. If you're, if you're just used to the black and the blue and the gray, and that's all they're used to, you got to give him some time. And, and, I'm, and I'm saying that's good, but my wife goes, man, I don't want you going out wearing a jersey. Hey, comb that hair of yours, and, or do this. And, but when I went to the men's retreat, I went with the jersey on. She said, you're going to jersey? I said, I'm going with a bunch of men. I don't even feel like brushing my teeth. That's going to go out there and have a great time. I went over there, I didn't take a shower at all. I'm not saying I'm a great time with daughter, but I'm just free. I was eating a bunch of cookies. I said, man, my wife was here. She was like, man, you can't be eating no cookies. And we go, I was like, I was Anyways, appearance matters. Let me ask you wives. I think all your wives want your man looking good. And it matters, you guys. It really, really matters. And it matters so much in our life. You want your man looking good. You want him dressing good. You, you want him smelling nice and so forth. You, you, you would like to probably get his wardrobe hooked up. And it probably comes someday. Or maybe you're doing it now, which is a good thing. But what I just want you to understand is that you, the appearances matter. I don't know how many women that you talk to, like, man, my husband just doesn't care about himself. And you should care about yourself. You should be well-groomed. You should care about those things. And understand that the devil, he's always making somebody try to look attractive to your husband or to your wife. Always will. I'm not saying you've got to go out there and just provocative, brother, and you've got your hair all, your soap all, all open up, and you got all this, this weird look about you. I'm not saying that about it all, but you should take care of yourself. The other thing I understand is it matters also with women. It really matters with women. You think about women today, that's how you see some women walking around. It's crazy. You know, I trip out when I go to the mall and I go, I can't believe that that dude's wife let her walk out that way. I was like, wow. And, and thinking it looked good. And it's wild. Now let me tell you something, it's very important. It's important for men because men are visual, okay? They are. And all I'm trying to say is, let me tell you something, wives, take care of yourselves. And I'm not saying that, I, I have a Christian Dior said, he's the one that is a big designer.